right. So again, thank you for joining us for um, Grad School 101 and also about the Lee Business School and College of Hospitality. Um, so my name is Lori Filippo. I'm the Assistant Director for Grad Recruitment. And to start with, I'm just going to go over a little bit about the Graduate College. So first, why grad school at UNLV? What we do um, find out is that only about 14.4% actually hold graduate and professional degrees. This degree does make you more marketable, more sought after from employers. It does give you the different types of skills that employers are looking for um, in regards to research, leadership, communication, um, and really helps you take control of your future. So why grad school at UNLV? Um, UNLV is a prestigious R1 ranking institution. Only one of 131 institutions in the U.S. actually hold this ranking. At UNLV, we do have over 175 graduate degree and certificate programs, and that includes over 40 doctoral and professional programs. We are the second most diverse university in the country. And then on top, um, um, with rankings, we do rank top 10 in social mobility. Um, we also are one of only 119 universities to have the community engagement classification. Um, and a lot of our programs that you'll hear from in just a little bit, on top of being an R1 ranking institution and being regionally accredited, they do hold their own national rankings and accreditation. So graduate studies at UNLV, you will learn from nationally and internationally recognized faculty in highly ranked programs. You'll do a lot with the community. Um, again, you'll hear about this in a little bit on how our programs do partner, how you'll intern with local employers, and again, just be really involved with the community um, in Las Vegas. Um, we do understand that our um, students are very non-traditional. Um, they may have families, they may work full-time. Um, so with grad school, we do offer our courses in the afternoon, evening. We have online courses. Um, we even have fully online grad programs. With grad school, you will also be able to gain um, hands-on experience through graduate assistantships. You might um, be in an undergrad class right now and have a GA that's currently working in there, um, but we'll touch on this in a little bit. Um, and of course, you'll be able to form those relationships with your faculty and your classmates. So if you're not familiar with UNLV, we were founded in 1957. Currently, we have over 5,000 grad students on campus. Um, of those students, over 1,000 are international students, and our students are really coming from all over the world. Okay, so I just want to briefly touch on paying for grad school. So this is just an estimate on what it would look like to pay for grad school and how much our students are currently paying right now. Um, for the academic year, this is the tuition and fees. If you are an in-state student, you're looking at a little over $7,000. If you're out of state, you're looking at a little over $24,000. Now, again, this is for um, annual tuition and fees. Um, for a full-time grad student, our students are taking nine credits per semester to be considered full-time, um, or that would be equivalent to three classes. So if you did go full-time um, your fall and your spring semester, this is an estimate on what you may be looking at. But um, we do want to help out any way we can with that cost. So to do that, um, these are some of our funding opportunities. We have over a thousand graduate assistantships on campus. What the GA um, is, is they are students that are also working on campus. Um, the GA is a full package deal, so it covers your full tuition. Um, if you are an out-of-state student, it will waive that out-of-state fee. Um, I will say with the full tuition coverage, it's up to nine credits, so it will just depend on the department and what kind of GA that you're actually doing. Um, it may cover only six credits, but it also may cover that full nine credits. Um, now, on top of the coverage for your tuition, it will also provide you with an annual stipend. This did just recently increase. It is now increased between seventeen and 22000 
You also have health insurance benefits. Um, if you need to use UNLV health insurance while you're a GA, um, the GA will cover that health insurance. It also provides summer tuition benefits. Um, with grad school, we also have 5.7 million in awards. Um, this is out to new and current students. We have awards. Um, fellowship opportunities. So definitely check out your department, ask them if there's any funding opportunities. Um, make sure to always look back for any kind of scholarships that you can apply for. Um, with Nevada, we also have the low cost of living and tuition. Um, so we have no state income tax in Nevada. Um, we do have many different residency options available to our students. And then of course we have the local discounts, tickets and entertainment. Um, while you are going to UNLV, we want to make sure that we provide as much service as we can to really give you that full experience at UNLV. Um, so we do have the GPSA. The GPSA provides all free leadership, certificates, career support, workshops, and so much more to our graduate students. Um, this image is actually located on the second floor of our library. Um, in this, um, this is known as our grad commons. And in this image, you'll see that there's whiteboards, technology, computers, there's a kitchen space, all available just to grad students. There's also the Grad Academy, which again offers a ton of free resources to our students. And I like to show this slide to really give you an idea of all that they do offer. Um, so just some things that I'll point out is those certifications, again, another free resource and to make you more marketable and sought after from your employers. Um, so maybe you're going for, if you're going for the elite business school or hospitality, but you really want to do more with mentorship or research, you can get these free certifications while you're going to grad school. There's also the writing boot camp um, that can help you if you are working on any kind of publications or writing while you're in grad school. Um, and then all the events, make sure to check out your Rebel email. Um, a lot of the events do come with funding opportunities. Um, once you are interest, uh, once you know which program you want to apply for with grad school, you will apply right online through the Grad Rebel Gateway. The application fee for the application is $95 for international students and $60, $60 for domestic students. Um, through the Grad Rebel Gateway, you will go ahead and upload all of your requirements for your application. Um, but the main thing with grad school is know your deadline. Each of our programs do have a specific deadline on when you have to submit your application and materials by. Once you submit your application and your documents, your application will be reviewed first by the graduate admissions team. They will want to make sure that you have a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution. For your bachelor's degree, you do have to have at least a 2.75 overall GPA. If you fall below that, they will look at the last 60 credits you've completed to see that you have at least a 3.0. Um, we do need to see transcripts from each post-secondary institution that you've attended. If you attended any coursework or degrees outside of the U.S., um, you will need to provide a transcript that's both in the original language and an English translation if it's not already in English. If you are not a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, um, you may be required to also provide proof of English proficiency. Um, this would be shown through the TOEFL, IELTS, um, the PTE, Duolingo test, or if you've completed a post-secondary degree from an institution where English is the primary language of instruction, we can use that degree in place of the English test. Now, if you have any questions about these requirements or what may be required for your program, go ahead and contact us. We're here to help you out with any questions you may have. Um, again, application deadlines, Make sure you know what your deadline is. Um, all of the graduate programs do have their own deadlines. Some only admit once a year. Some may admit fall and spring. But if you have to do a GRE, a GMAT test, if you have to do a personal statement, get letters of recommendation, you definitely want to give yourself plenty of time to get all of these things completed and submitted by that specific deadline. So just your next steps is you'll want to meet with our admission and recruitment team. If you do have any questions about the application deadline, what may be required. Um, so our email here is gradrecruitment at unlv.edu. Um, check out all of our program pages on our website. 
Um, you can review all of what's needed through the program pages or on our catalog. Um, we also have graduate coordinators for each of our programs that you are more than welcome to contact if you do have any specific questions about the programs. And then once you're ready, go ahead and apply and submit all of your documents in the Grad Rebel Gateway. Just to let you know, we do have other events that you're more than welcome to attend. Um, a lot of them are virtual. Um, I would say the next one that you would maybe want to attend is the 201 event. That will go into more specifics about um, the requirements that are needed for your application. Um, but also look out for any department-specific events and to see if we'll be on campus at any fairs or tabling events. And then, of course, stay connected. Um, our contact information is here. Um, and just to let you know, I will send out these presentations to you um, by hopefully by tomorrow. So you'll have all the information readily available. Um, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us or make an appointment to come meet with um, our team. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'll pass it over to Dr. Davis and Diane Reitman. Hi everybody. My name is Lisa Davis. I'm with the Office of Graduate Student Services for the Lee Business School. Hello, everyone. My name is Diane Reitman, and I am the Director for Graduate Programs in the in Haraz College of Hospitality. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about the MBA Master's of Science Hotel Program, uh, details from both sides, the, the, bene the really nice benefit of a dual program. Let me turn my video on. There we go. Um, is that you're able to do two degrees and you're saving credits by combining those two. So in this case, it's the MBA and the Masters of Science in Hotel Administration. So we'll go through and talk a little bit about that from the MBA side and the hospitality side. Can everybody see my, my slides? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. For the Lee Business School, the Lee Business School is AACSB accredited, and what that means is the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, and only 5% of the business schools worldwide have that accreditation, and we are one of them. We're going through the reaccreditation process now, and being part of that team doing reaccreditation, it is definitely a lot of work to maintain that accreditation. Uh, we are also ranked, the MBA program is ranked in the top 100, according to U.S. News and World Report, and we've had been in the top 100 for about the last 10 years. So that's definitely a, a nice accolade, I think. And uh, if Lori already mentioned, uh, the university is an R1 institution. So you have R1, accredited business school, and the uh, top 100 for MBA programs. So yes, so uh, UNLV's master's um, in hotel administration. So we are ranked in the top five in hospitality programs in the world. We're currently ranked number one um, best hospitality in the world. So yay for us. So we'll <laughs> get to that as long as we can. Um, we have an ultra modern learning facility that's located right here in the heart of the industry. So you're kind of learning from the best of the best. We just had an amazing career mixer yesterday and there was about 300 students that participated. We had over 80 um, businesses, business partners that were there. So again, it's like you're in the middle of the best of the best. Um, student, you're collaborating with some of the best faculty in the world that we kind of talked about, um, Lori talked about a little bit earlier. And you're really going to, you know, experience a one of a kind, you know, gaining management courses, academic courses, hospitality, you're going to learn a little bit about everything in this program. Um, there are two tracks that our students can choose from either a professional or a thesis track. So a lot of times some of our students want to go into a PhD program after they've completed their um, dual program. And so sometimes they'll do the thesis track in order to um, get some more experience with research. And we also offer a one-of-a-kind mentoring program um, with professionals within our industry. So um, in this dual program, you kind of get the best of both worlds because you'll have your business side and then you have the hospitality side. And then so sometimes those mentors can be, you know, overlap a little bit. And so I can't beat that. Um, and then 
we have a great alumni network and they are awesome and they do a ton of events all over the world. So that's a little bit about our master's program. I think it's a nice compliment. Like you mentioned, I love that mentoring program that the hospitality students uh, have a, have a chance to participate in. So on the, the dual program, what's really nice is that the programs share credits in a sense, because the MBA program is typically 42 credits and the MBA program provides you that breadth of business. So you have the accounting, leadership, finance, marketing, uh, economics, the statistics part, and then it ties together in a capstone. So those are the core courses that all students would take. So students that are doing the dual and hospitality would also be in those courses with students that are doing the regular MBA program or uh, let's say the dual medical, we have a dual MD MBA. So you're in classes with individuals that will be possibly in very different fields than you'll be in. And it provides you, and like Diane mentioned, the network opportunities after you graduate, the opportunity to really develop that extensive network among your uh, former classmates and now your um, colleagues in the workforce. So these seven courses are the core. And then you have three electives. So let's say you're interested kind of in maybe being an entrepreneur within the hospitality industry. You could take new venture creation, new venture management. So there's a lot of different electives that you can take. So instead of taking 14 courses, you're taking 10 courses. Four of the courses on the MBA side uh, are waived. And similar to uh, the MBA program, um, our program is only... Uh, 21 credits. So uh, the standalone program is about 31 credits. So you're only having to take seven courses with us. Um, and as you can see there, uh, you'll have your core classes. And then there are about two to three um, or one to two electives that you'll take. So something that you're interested in, whether it's food service or meeting or event planning or hotel or gaming, um, we have a ton of electives that you can choose from. And so, and what's nice is that our classes are sometimes at, in the evenings and some of them, you know, might be uh, during the day or online or hybrid. So there is kind of a mix and kind of fits a lot of um, everybody's schedules because we know that a lot of our students in the dual program um, may already be working. And so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Of I'm glad worlds. you mentioned that, Diane, because I did not mention that the MBA side is hybrid. All of the mm -hmm. courses are hybrid. And what that looks like is every odd week you're in person establishing those relationships with the, the faculty and the students. But then every other week on the even weeks, you're working in front of your computer with your slippers on. So it's kind of nice. Some professors have it to where it's fully asynchronous. So you're working through modules. Others, you could be working with students on a case study remotely. So it's it's kind of the best of both worlds for that. So for students in the dual program, making sure that you're not doing a hybrid class the same night you're doing maybe a fully uh, remote hotel class. So it's uh, it's nice to be able to kind of look at those two programs and design the best schedule to complete it uh, in a way that works for your schedule. So to me, the return on the on investment for the dual program is incredible. When you look at a top 100 MBA program, the top hospitality program, and you're looking at that for about $25,000 per in-state, it is an incredible return on your investment. It is definitely money well spent, whether you're planning to go in industry or planning to go on for your PhD. And I know we have had students in the dual program do both. They've done the professional paper track, They've also done the thesis track and moved on to a PhD program. Do you have anything you want to add about tuition, Diane? No, and you know, our students that do go on to the PhD um, in hospitality here, it is a fully funded program. So a lot of times our students are, are, especially our dual students, we have a couple dual students that have went into our PhD program and um, a couple of them actually work for us now and teach for us and so, yeah. This is my favorite part of the presentation is talking about the student experience and the opportunities. I know Diane mentioned the mentorship program, which I find to be an incredible benefit for our dual students, but there's a lot of other ways you can get connected to not only current students and alumni, but also to the community. 
So we do have uh, career services offices that will assist you in kind of where you're at in your career. For the MBA side, we have students that have as little as six months of work experience, maybe some internship experience. And then on the other side, we have students that are coming back after 15 years in an industry and maybe switching careers. So we have a career services office that kind of meets the students where they're at. So they can do resume reviews. They can do um, mock interviews, executive coaching. So I think that really helps students to kind of hone in what they want to do after their education. And the hospitality uh, college has their own uh, dedicated career service office. And so we'll help students locate internships, um, full-time positions, part-time positions. Um, and we also do the resume and interviewing skills. Um, like I said yesterday, we had a huge event um, where we had a lot of our students participate. Um, a lot of our graduate students participated in that program as well. And so you're really able to connect with some of the key professionals um, in our hospitality uh, industry. Industry. And again, um, like we keep saying, we, we do have one of the top, we do have a top mentoring program. I've, I've worked for a lot of universities and it's by far one of the best mentoring programs I've experienced. So it is an awesome opportunity. I, I know that uh, the hospitality career services office has a lot of events. The elite business school career services office has a lot of different events. And then we have UNLV's career services that had a big career fair today. And I think they had 230 employers that actually came to that event. So there's really a lot of opportunities to, I would say, kind of practice and hone your interviewing skills and build those connections while you're a student so that you can get that perfect position for you after you graduate. So a little bit about the demographics. Uh, we still require the GMAT. We do have some opportunities for students that may be able to waive the GMAT, but for now we still have that as a requirement. So the, I have a few slides also a little bit later on in the presentation about how the GMAT is changing, but this gives you a little bit of information about our program. And I think uh, this is pre-COVID. I need to probably update it to post-COVID but I know the age range and work experience is still consistent. About the same number of women. I know our uh, minority and international numbers have changed over the past few years since COVID, like everything else has changed. Our demographics of the students coming into our program have changed as well. This picture was from last semester. We have an open house uh, every semester. This is our student lounge that is open to students. So I know Laurie talked about the grad commons that is at the library. They also have a facility in the gateway building. And then we have this, this, this um, area for our grad students within Lee. So if you're a dual student in the hospitality, you could be in the lounge talking to somebody that's doing the master's in cyber or MIS or accounting. So it's another way to kind of connect with some of the other folks within the business school and hospitality school. And for our program, um, as of fall 22, we have about 90 active uh, HOA students. I think it's 92, because I think I just ran the numbers today. Um, and then we have about, yep, about, uh, I want to say about 10 in the MBA. And then we have our MIS, the Master's in Information um, Systems. Um, yeah. And then we have our mix of our female and our male students and international students. And I think that's what's so great about both of these programs is that you're really gonna get different perspectives from different students and learn a lot about what um, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And you know, um, learn about the different cultures that we have going on here at UNLV. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great, it's great. So thank you. And I think another thing to add with that is that UNLV, I'm sure Lori mentioned it earlier, is one of the most diverse campuses in the nation. And I think when you look at workplaces and the diversity of workplaces now, going to school in a diverse institution adds so much value to what you're going to bring to an institution. And I think that's both on the hospitality side, which folks in hospitality, they work with people everywhere. 
uh, and then on business too with global teams. So it does give you, I would say, a little bit of an extra edge, I think, by attending UNLV as one of the most diverse institutions. Um, beyond the classroom, this picture was taken at Alibaba headquarters in Hangzhou. This is from 2018, and we went to China in 2018 and 2019 as one of our international trips. That is uh, an option. And then we have uh, speaker series and student mixers. We have Rebel Venture Fund if you're interested in the entrepreneurial side of um, finance. More about the international trip. Um, we've gone to China. We look at domestic companies, international companies, um, companies that do business internationally. They're based in the States. Uh, which is one of the pictures at Saini Industries, which is a domestic Chinese company. Russia, uh, this is a picture of one of the culture visits. So we don't only do company visits, but we also learn a lot about the culture. This was at the oldest Kremlin in Novgorod, Russia. And it's nice too, because we also learn about food, uh, culture through food, which is awesome uh, to be able to experience the food in the different countries that we visit. And then Peru, we went to Machu Picchu, as well. And I had no idea that Lima in Peru is a gastronomical capital. It's a big place for food. So we did get to experience the food there as well. A couple of other things we do. Uh, if, I think it's amazing uh, that karaoke is still, and we've been doing karaoke for seven or eight years, at least once a year, is still our best attended event. It's just incredible. MBAs and hospitality students love to sing. During the pandemic, we added hiking uh, to allow our students to interact in a safe way in the open air. And we still continue that. We have a hiking trip coming up, I think the second week in November up at um, Red Rock. And then we also do bowling. Um, we've done a lot. Uh, last semester, we did line dancing, took a group of students to, to learn about line, uh, learn how to line dance. It was definitely a lot of fun. So uh, allowing students to interact with other students and develop those relationships outside of the classroom setting is very important for our programs. We also do business visits, and this kind of stemmed from our time internationally doing visits. It's really interesting to see what type of companies we have in Las Vegas. Uh, we've been to City National Arena, the home of the Golden Knights, learned a lot about how they interact with community and their, their plan for their interaction over the years. Um, T-Mobile Arena, home of the Golden Knights as well, where they play, learned more about that sustainable facility. And we also did a hard hat tour at Area 15 before they did the Omega Mart and just did a walkthrough when it was just a shell. So it's really interesting um, to do these different business visits. This past year, we went to a gaming company, we went to the Innovation Center Blackfire, and we went to the VA hospital to learn a lot more about public private hospitals. Uh, this semester, we are going to, um, we're doing a brewery tour, learning more about the process of brewing beer, and then also all the other items that the business deals with supply chain, they're going to market, their market, um, the startup, those type of things. And then we'll have a mixer after that. So really getting our students engaged outside of class. I'll go a little bit more about the application process. This is the last process, um, the last part of the presentation. So these are the application deadlines. I did add something to this one. Um, July 15th, we recommend students get their applications in by July 15th, but we typically have until August 1st to get those applications in. And we admit fall and spring for the dual program. The MBA program will admit also in the summer, but that's not an option for the, the dual program. So we like to think that we have a deadline that meets your timeline. Um, I like to tell prospective students that you definitely want to budget your time, um, to, uh, time for grad school because it is a commitment of resources, both time and money. So making sure it's the right time to go back to school is important.
So going through the application process, copies of your transcripts, your unofficial transcripts can be uploaded into the application. When you apply for the dual program, both the MBA or Office of Graduate Student Services will have access to your information as will hospitality. So they, during the program, when you're applying, each program will make their recommendation based on the materials that you submit. Copies of your resume, we like to look at work experience, statement of purpose. This one, we look at your writing, but it also gives you a chance to really think about why you're going back to grad school. Again, it's a commitment of time and resources to so kind of honing that in to find out why you're going back to school and, and what you're planning to do with that degree afterwards. We do require the GMAT on the MBA side. I know on hospitality, they do not. Um, and then international students have additional requirements. I put this one in here. Um, the GMAT is changing. The GMAT score is going to be changing. This is based on the current GMAT. Beginning in November, students have the option to register for the new GMAT exam, and that's what I would recommend. So we do get a lot of questions on the MBA side for the GMAT. We do have some waivers for the GMAT, but in other cases, all other students would need to take the GMAT exam. It's probably the longest part of the application process is preparing and taking the test. I know one thing that I like about the GMAT that I found out when I went back for my PhD is it really does allow you to look and structure that study time to make sure it's a good time to go back to grad school. I delayed my admission for my PhD for a year because I didn't have time to study for that GRE. And that was a good indicator for me that it wasn't time for me to go back to grad school. So I think taking that extra year, preparing for the, the entrance exam really allowed me to get everything in order to really dedicate the time that I needed to for grad school. There's a lot of sample tests and different options to study. You can find more information out at mba.com. It is an expensive test, so you only want to take it once, maybe twice. Uh, I would recommend doing sample tests. So you can do a lot of sample tests that when you get to the real exam center date or the when you get to the testing center and take the test, that you only have to take it once. So again, a lot of sample tests. This is the location for the Las Vegas site. You can go to mba.com and be able to find the GMAT site that is located closest to you. This is a little, I mentioned the GMAT was changing. I really like that they've streamlined this test. It's been the biggest change that I've seen over 20, 30 years on the GMAT. It's a shorter version. It's two hours and 15 minutes. It's a score that is across the three sections on the test. Currently, there are separate scores. This is a unified score. There's no essay section. We look at the statement of purpose for your writing. You're able to review and change questions. You can get detailed score reports, which is a great opportunity for students, and you can send it to up to five schools. And it is uh, $275 for in-person, $300 for uh, an online. I would, if I were taking the test, I would go into the testing center because as you heard, I have a dog that probably wouldn't be able to sit still for two and a half hours while I took the exam. Um, so kind of determine what option works best for you so that you can really focus on that test. This Lisa, is a little, uh-huh. Uh, there was a question in the chat, if you could oh. explain where um, how they would go about uh, receiving those waivers. Okay, um, at the, I'll type my um, email in the chat and you can I'll put it in there for you. Me. Yeah, there's a couple things if you have a terminal degree. So if you're already a medical doctor, a lawyer, um, that would be waived. If you have a significant amount of work experience, um, we would possibly waive that. If you have a, a master's quantitative master's degree, uh, possibly waive. So there's three different ways that you can uh, get that 
test waived. And I can send you that waiver form so you can look and see if you meet any of those requirements, then send in the requested documents. Thank you, Diane. I didn't look at the, the chat. No problem. And I'll go ahead and type my, oops, let me put that in. I I'm put that put in my... there for you. I put your oh. name and Marlena's name in there for you already. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so send that GMAT waiver in if you meet the requirements and it does speed up that application process because again, you're not having that time to study for the exam. The next deadline is November 15th, so we still have time for the spring intake. We also accept the GRE as well. They've also recently gone under a change on the GRE as well. And I'm not as familiar with the GRE. So our office, we're located on the second floor of Beam Hall. Um, where are you at, Diane? I am located uh, in Hospitality Hall and I'm on the third floor, room 347. Beam Hall is an old building. It's not as nice as Hospitality Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a coffee shop, Rebel Grounds. It's a student-run coffee shop that's great over in Hospitality Hall. So I know we're available if anybody would like to meet um, for a Google Meets to talk about any of your particular questions that you have for the dual program. I think this is the final slide. Do you have anything else to, to share, Diane, about the admission process? I uh, I put my contact information in the chat. So if anybody has any hospitality related questions, please feel free to reach out. I also put uh, Marlena Gaitlin and Lisa Davis's uh, emails in the chat as well. So if you have questions about the MBA program or maybe us talking about the MIS program may have piqued your interest, uh, you can email either one of those individuals for more information. Diane, I think sometimes uh, the MBA MIS, both sides, uh, well, the MIS side sometimes will waive that GMAT as well. So that might be a good option if you're looking for a dual program, but really intimidated about the uh, GMAT to actually look at that, uh, that hospitality MIS dual. Did you want to talk a little bit about that as well? Uh, I don't know the mo a lot about it, so... Um, but yeah, it's our, uh, it's a management information system. So if you have a background in computer programming and computers, um, analytics, anything like that, um, we, there is a dual program for that, um, with our HOA along with our HOA program as well. And, and I then know our, on the MIS, the MIS side, I know it's about managing information and I, I know you yeah. and I both deal with data and information in our roles. So I think no matter what area they're in, in hospitality or in business, IT is going to, to touch that uh, career. Right. And you can always way. take the classes as electives if you so choose. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of great options, definitely recommend to do your due diligence to find out what program is going to work best for, for you and your goals. And we'll, we'll be here to help you along that journey to make, help you make that decision. So thank you for attending. Mm -hmm.